Welcome back to the type system. I'm Daniel and in this video I'm going to show you inner types and path dependent types. So in our IDE, as usual under part 5 type system, let's create a new Scala application. Let's call this path dependent types. Make this an object and as always extends app. Now this lesson is going to be fairly simple. We're going to talk about nested types and how they're used and accessed. So if I declare, for example, a class called outer, this class outer can have inner class object or type definition. So if I say class inner or object inner object or a type member inner type, as you saw in the last video, then these are perfectly valid definitions. So this should be pretty clear because most of the code we wrote relied on us defining classes inside our applications, which are again, their own objects. But not only classes can have inner classes, you can define classes, objects and types basically anywhere, maybe with the exception of type members. So you can have, for example, a method, which returns an int, and say that this method is so complicated that it warrants the definition of a class inside like helper class. And at the end, of course, just return a value. So this definition of a class inside of a block, which is an expression, is valid. So you can basically define classes on objects anywhere. But the exception is types, because in anywhere other than classes and traits, you can only define types as aliases. So for example, if you write something like helper type, the compiler expects you to write an alias. So say for example it's string. So this was simple enough. Now the second part of the inner type story is using them. Now in the case of types nested inside classes, like inner classes and inner objects, the class members and the object members and the trait members and so on and so forth are defined per instance. So for example, I can define a val outer as a new outer but I cannot say val inner equals new inner because inner does not exist. It only exists in the context of outer. But I can also not say outer dot inner. I can only say new outer with small caps. So if I name this O, I can only say val inner equals new O dot inner. So the O dot inner is its own type. So O dot inner is a type. So in order to reference an inner type, you need an outer instance. And different instances will mean different inner types. So for example, if I declare another outer, so val double O equals new outer. Okay, so single O and double O are two different instances of outer. I can say val other inner with the type double O dot inner, but I cannot assign a new single O dot inner to it because the single O dot inner and the double O dot inner are different types. Okay, so this doesn't compile. But otherwise, inner is visible inside the declaring scope. So for example, if I define a method called print, which takes an inner, and let's say this just prints i, then uh, this is perfectly valid. So I can then say single o print inner, because the types match, inner is of type single o dot inner, but I cannot say double o print inner, of course, because they're of different types. So I'm just going to comment this out because it's not okay. So you learned a few things. You learned that you can declare classes and objects inside other classes and objects, and their types are path dependent. So this is what we call path dependent type. Now there's another new thing that I want you to take away. And that's the fact that all the inner types have a common super type, and that is outer hash inner. So for example, if I define in this outer class a method called, let's call this print general, 
which takes an element of type outer hash inner and this just prints line i okay then i can say single o print general its own inner of course but we can also say double o print general inner this is now valid because inner being of type single o dot inner is now a subtype of this more general type outer hash inner so as a general use case whenever you want to make sure that objects created or managed by a specific instance of an outer type cannot be accidentally or purposely interchanged or mixed with the instances created by another outer type then path dependent types are the way to go so the lesson was quite easy but i'm going to test your skills with a not so easy exercise now in this scenario assume that you are the developer of a small database which may be keyed so you have a database keyed by integers or strings okay but you want to design a flexible api so that you can expand it in the future to other key types so you have a small trait in your current design you have a small trait called item keyed by a generic key type and you have some extensions to that with a trait int item which extends item int and the trait string item extends item string okay each with its own methods and its own functionalities okay but this is your general api now the point of this exercise is for you to implement a method i'm going to call it get you can call it whatever you want you can call it extract fetch select you can name it whatever you want i'm just going to name it get and this receives a type parameter which is of an item type okay so this has a key generic type as well and this will receive a value which is of type something i'm just going to name this key but this is the keys type of the item type that you pass it here and this will return an item of an item type so I want you to devise a good method signature and also modify this little code here that you also have so this is all within your power okay so that when you say get with int item and you pass it a value say 42 this should compile so this is okay and also if you say get with a string item and you pass it some uh, string like uh, a home or something like that this is also okay but you don't want the types to be polluted for example if you uh, call get with int item and you pass it a string say scala this should not be okay this is a problem that many developers face when they want to create type safe APIs for other people. So this problem right here that they want to prevent this kind of call, this is very hard. Okay, so think about how you would do that. If you don't find a solution, don't blame yourself. This is hard and I'll come back with a solution as a hint or as a couple of hints, use path dependent types and abstract type members and or type aliases okay so pause the video now and I'll come back with a solution all right so I'm curious of how you thought about this problem and here is a potential solution now we basically want some kind of type constraint and given the exercise in the last lecture with the abstract types one such possible solution for constraining types is to mix in a trait and I'm going to call this item like which has an abstract type member called key 
Now I'm going to add this item like trait to the picture by saying that our item trait extends item like. And I'm going to enforce that the type key here is equal to the type k that this item is parameterized with. Now having said that, I can go to my get method and force my item type to be constrained or upper bounded in this guy item like, which suddenly tells the compiler, hey, this is type parameterized with something that has an abstract type member. Now, this abstract type member can be used as a path dependent type by saying item type hash key. And suddenly the compiler clicked saying, hey, this type is wrong. So type mismatch expected path dependent types int item hashtag key and int item hash key is int because I forced it here to be int because I parameterized it with int so the type key must be int so this type is wrong so this will not compile so I'm just gonna comment this out of course this get method must return something so I'm just going to return the uh, triple question now if I compile this then this will compile fine which is what we wanted. We wanted an API method that compiles fine for the types that we wanted to constrain it with and not compile for any other type combinations. This was a hard exercise. This may still be a hard exercise even after I'm done explaining. So feel free to come back to this exercise or to this video whenever you face the situation in real life. All right, so easy concepts, but really tough applications. This is the type system folks, but that's why I'm here to help. All right. I'm Daniel and I'm waiting for you in the next video.